foot's I mean, starting to jump a little bit. You better get to your next question. Whether, you know, you, you think you're free of... Nothing better than shooting scenes in Veve, Switzerland, <laughs> in old age prosthesis, while you are booming on mushrooms still from the night Jeez. before. Uh, uh, well, I'm just asking questions. That's right. Okay. Bye. Thank you, you guys. Are you... I'm sorry. I... Robert Downey Jr., the esteemed superstar of the action realm, appears to have taken a bold step. After enduring his own trials within the industry, it seems Robert has chosen to unveil the unsavory underpinnings of the entertainment world. His candid outburst has sent shockwaves across the internet, throwing the industry into turmoil. Let's delve into this latest expose that will definitely have your jaws on the floor. There's no denying that Robert's success in recent years has skyrocketed with Marvel. Since launching the Marvel Cinematic Universe back in 2008 with Iron Man, the House of Ideas has completely changed the way we watch movies and the way Hollywood thinks about them. But despite the seeming success, there were many controversies that started budding over the years. And as you might have guessed, the industry tried their darndest to bury them. I have practically zero regard for what is physically printed on the pages. In a cryptic message, Downey alluded that the creator of his character Iron Man is underestimating his influence. Many people believe that Robert wanted to discreetly point out the inappropriate behavior allegations against Stan Lee. You see, the Daily Mail, a UK tabloid with dubious ethics and a knack for getting sordid scoops, broke the news reporting that Lee allegedly behaved inappropriately with young female nurses who were working at his home and allegedly asked them to perform intimate acts on him. The source said, he doesn't seem to care what people think of him. He's lost his filter. There has been a stream of young nurses coming to his house in West Hollywood, and he has been s harassing them. He finds it funny. Unfortunately, this was not the first time Lee had been wrapped up in a scandal. A former assistant, Sean Lukasiewicz, sued Lee back in 2015 for wrongful termination and severe and constant mental A. Lukasiewicz claimed that Lee, as well as his wife and daughter, had verbally attacked him during the months he worked for the comic book creator. Although it seemed to have wreaked quite the havoc, it looked like the case was quite the opposite. It might be mind-boggling to know that Lee, the legendary mind behind Spider-Man, X-Men, and Iron Man, was actually a victim of mistreatment. The alleged culprit said in a statement to TMZ, I have taken great care of Stan Lee for the past many years and have never had a problem directly with Stan. I have had a fantastic relationship with him for the past many years, as he has stated countless times on the record, and I literally saved his life once. This is a witch hunt by his daughter and her lawyer against me because she cannot stand the fact Stan likes me so much. I will 100% prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the allegations against me are false, and I will definitely take legal action against anyone who is making up these lies. The truth will come out. This revelation calls into question the inner workings of the industry as to how such an individual was appointed so close to the sales force behind the multi-billion dollar film industry. On top of that, Stan's own daughter also played her part in the mistreatment for big bucks. But where the issue of elder abuse kept happening was from Stanley's daughter, JC, who made him keep working. But to make money, she had him working 80 to 100 hour weeks touring conventions, which he made millions from but was reported to be a great personal stress on it. Apparently, fans all over the world were enraged by this despicable behavior. Stan was such a heartwarming and wholesome fellow. After hearing about the sad story of his abuse by his daughter and other close people, I was absolutely furious. A father as kind and as sweet as Stan doesn't deserve such cruel and evil people around him. Now, we all know that Robert and Stan had a very good relationship with each other. When Stan expressed that RDJ had played the character just like he had envisioned it, RDJ took the compliment like a medal, stating, I started, oh my god, it's wild. Even a guy who created the character thinks of me in a moment where he is talking about the character, and this is so meta. Stan Lee forgets who I am in that moment. Now, after these accusations surfaced, RDJ allegedly used his influence to restore Stan's honor by publicly protesting against them. Robert Downey Jr. was the highest earned actor of the 2010s in the comeback story of the century, but now many people are concerned he looks unhealthy. How this begins is when Robert Downey Jr. decided he wouldn't be continuing as Iron Man, he said his next movie role is the hardest decision of his career. But that's not all. 
Contrary to popular opinion, Stan was no billionaire, despite being the creator of multi-billion worth of films. For starters, Lee was entrepreneurial and creative, but he was far from a robust businessman. As he wrote in his autobiography co-authored with George Mayer Excelsior, one of my lifelong regrets is that I've always been too casual about money. It's been made abundantly clear to me by friends such as Marshall and others that I should have realized I was creating a whole caboodle of characters that became valuable franchises but I was creating them for others. LA Times reported that Marvel Enterprises Inc. was told it owes comic book icon Stan 10% of the profit it has received since November 1998 for films based on Spider-Man and other superheroes Lee created. The 82-year-old Lee could be entitled to tens of millions of dollars, considering the blockbuster success of the movies Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. His attorney Howard Graff said, this is a sweeping victory for Mr. Lee. He never had any equity or royalty in the business. Until 1998 when Marvel promised him 10% of profits on the movies to stay involved with the company. But they didn't follow through. Lee later sued Marvel for not honoring a stipulation that promised to pay him 10% of the profits from Marvel Enterprise film and television productions. Despite his $1 million annual salary as Chairman Emeritus, Lee's attorneys argued that the provision be honored. The grand battle between Marvel and its most famous employee shocked observers and sparked news headlines lines around the globe. Summing up the public's general feeling about the controversy, Brent Staples of the New York Times explained, you can't blame the pitchman for standing firm and insisting on his due. This power play and injustice grated on RDJ's nerves. When he was allegedly asked about the past, he became so angry that he walked out of the interview. I think you're free of all of that, or whether that's still something I'm sorry, you... I, I really don't. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, uh, well, I'm just asking questions, that's all. Right. I mean. On top of all the drama with Stan, the casted actors also had a lot of issues between them. And yes, the core of the problem was again, the Marvel Company. Actually, the publishing company once again tried to go back on their word by paying the actors less than the amount they agreed on. Remember the War Machine character? Well, Terrence Howard, the actor who played the character, was denied his original salary. In 2013, Howard acknowledged the changeup during a guest appearance on Watch What Happens Live, revealing that he was pushed out due to a salary contract. Conflict. According to him, Robert D's MCU salary massively increased on the heels of Iron Man's massive success, resulting in a cutback on Howard's salary, which didn't sit well with him, especially since he claimed that he pushed for Downey to get the role. Regardless of what happened behind closed doors, it was early enough in the MCU that recasting a supporting character wasn't too daunting of a task, and it was clear that RDJ was a bankable franchise face. So after this very public insult, Terrence refused to ever work with Marvel. In an interview with Andy Cohen, he said, You'll hear a lot of fans asking, am I going to come back and be War Machine? Yeah, am I going to come back and be War Machine? I think they could have um, a, a huge franchise off of it. To put things in perspective, Robert Jr. was not Marvel's first choice for Iron Man. In fact, the actor joined the film after almost everyone else was hired, much against the wishes of Marvel bosses who had famously said that they would not hire the actor, with his history with substances at any cost. You might not know, but Howard was an Oscar-nominated actor who was coming off many hits, and he was offered a good deal, reportedly between $3.50 and $4.5 million. This would have made Howard the highest-paid star in the entire movie. On top of that, he was promised an additional $5 million if Iron Man 2 happened in which he was supposed to play the war machine. When Iron Man 2 finally happened, Howard's role was allegedly cut short, which implied the financial understanding to too. While Howard said he had a three-film contract with Marvel, and they were supposed to pay him $8 million for the sequel, all the studio was ready to fork out was a measly $1 million, which was way less than the first film. What's surprising is that amid the negotiations with Marvel, Howard called Downey Jr., but he didn't respond. Howard spilled the beans to Rolling Stone. I called Robbie and was like, look, man, I need the help that I gave you. Never heard from him. He claimed that the money that was supposed to come to him was now marked for the actor who played Tony Stark. He said, and guess who got the millions I was supposed to get? He got the whole franchise. So I've actually given him $100 million, which ends up being a $100 million loss for me from me trying to look after somebody. But you know, to this day, I would do the same thing. It's just my nature. The fans all over the world support Terrence's decision. They believe the corporation did not respect him, and he was right to walk away. 
For all of you who don't know, Terrence was the first on board for the movie about his favorite comic book hero. Execs weren't looking at Robert at all, and it was Terrence's own idea to take a million dollar pay cut just to bring Robert in for Iron Man 1. After Iron Man 1 was successful, execs cut Terrence's pay without even consulting him just to give Robert even more money. They cut his pay to give more money to the man that he already cut his own pay for. That's trash. If you respect yourself at all, you would have to walk away and that's exactly what Terrence did. I will never accept how they treated him, but hey, the world runs on money and the douchebags who have it. Now, before you think badly, you should know that RDJ was dead broke at the time and no one was casting him. He was arrested in 1996 for possession of illegal substances, unloaded a .357 caliber firearm, and was given three years of probation. RDJ was required to undergo mandatory substance testing. But since he was still in his rebellious days, he skipped a court-ordered test and spent nearly four months in the Los Angeles County Jail. On top of that, he skipped another test and was sentenced to three years of prison in 1999. Downey served 15 months in state prison in Corcoran, California. It's very difficult for you to maintain sobriety. Uh, you may take a look at a probation report if you choose. Uh, many, many, many months ago, in which you rather candidly said you didn't. According to the Marvel star, two weeks later, he was in Delano, a receiving center where they decide where you're going to go, that he said was arguably the most dangerous place I've ever been in my life because nobody is designated. Downey Jr. recalled, I remember walking out at one point when I hopped out of my cell to go to the shower. By the way, this would be the best soundbite, and I didn't know it, but I was a little spun out and I had my underwear on backwards. I remember eliciting some strong chuckles and jeers from my fellow inmates. We are programmed to, within a short amount of time, be able to adjust to things that are seemingly impossible. So with his history, his career was looking bleak, but since he was able to get the role, he was desperate enough to keep it. Now that RDJ has established his place in Hollywood, he's allegedly elucidating all the shady antics of Marvel. This next one might actually shock you the most. Contrary to what many believe, Marvel copied many comic characters from Jack Kirby. But it did it so effortlessly that no one noticed. And they got away with it because Marvel's legal team demanded that Kirby sign an onerous four-page document declaring that everything he had ever done for the firm had been done at the direction of Lee and or Marvel founder Martin Goodman and that he held no claim to any of it. Even the artwork itself was classified as a gift, one that Marvel could resign the rights to at any time. According to sources, Kirby began to become more vocal in his interviews in this period about his full role in those early Marvel days and the creations of the characters, beginning with one printed in Kitchen Sink Press, the Spirit Magazine, Hash 39, with his old boss, Will Eisner. At some point during this time, Kirby hand wrote a summary of his perspective on the creations of the assorted Marvel characters. The particular date at which he did this is unknown, but it appears to have happened in the early 1980s. According to Kirby, I created many costumes for new superheroes such as Iron Man, Ant-Man, and Amp, created all related characters such as Silver Surfer and Amp, Galactus, the Inhumans, and Amp, many more which are included in the enclosed list. To ensure sales, I also did the writing, which I was not credited for as Stan Lee, wrote the credits for all of the books, which I did not contest because of his relationship. But if you think Marvel was done, you have another thing coming. In 1973, Steve Gerber created Howard the Duck, a widely popular anthropomorphic duck that had an initial 33 series run. Howard. I am not Howard. Anymore. <laughs> However, just because Gerber created Howard didn't mean he owned him. As he initially created the character, Gerber worked for Marvel Comics, thus leaving the rights to Howard in Marvel's hands after Gerber left. This left Gerber angry, so he created a new comic, Destroyer Duck, which served as an allegory to Gerber wanting the rights to Howard as well as the creator's rights as a whole. In fact, during the time Gerber created and published Destroyer Duck Hash 1, he was locked in a legal battle with Marvel over possession of Howard. Since it was the beginning of the industry, creators were on a work-for-hire basis, meaning all work they contributed during their contract became property of the published when finished. The most famous byproduct of this relationship, of course, is that of Jerry Seigel and Joe Shuster, who sold the rights of Superman to Detective Comics for an infinitesimally small dollar 130. 
Similarly, the creative work of Gerber stayed with Marvel after his departure. Well, given Marvel's dark history, it is no wonder RDJ decided to quit the Iron Man role. Robert left his role as Iron Man back in 2019, majorly changing the MCU. Downey made his debut as Tony Stark in Jon Favreau's initial film in 2008. The character became synonymous with the MCU, appearing in two additional Iron Man movies and several other franchise offerings. You might be aware that Iron Man sacrificed himself in Avengers Endgame, with Downey's last playing the beloved hero. Well, although this story is sweet and all, there is one thing that is not widely documented. You see, when directors Joe and Anthony Russo told him their plan for Tony Stark's fate in the movie, he shed tears of joy. Joe said in a new behind-the-scenes book called The Story of Marvel Studios, The Baking of the Marvel Cinematic Universe by Tara Bennett and Paul Terry. When we started winding down the pitch and getting to his death, Robert started crying, and when we were done, he said, that's F awesome. That's when we knew that we had to do it, because he felt it. Joe later continued explaining that he felt like it was the demise of a family member. In a way, it's almost like a death in the family. When you're saying to someone, all these people you've loved and have hung out with for 10 years, that's all gonna go away because we wanna tell a story a certain way. Additionally, actor Downey Jr. has been semi-retired after starring in his final Marvel movie. After that, he attempted to launch a new franchise for himself with Doolittle, but the movie ended up bombing and pushed RDJ further away from acting. But is probably at this point going to end up losing more money than Cats did. Uh, they're saying it could lose in excess of $100 million. In a new interview, he spoke about his years playing around in the Marvel Cinematic Universe sandbox and admitted that working on those movies made him worried about losing his acting skills. Yes, a hundred percent, and I knew there was a point where Chris Nolan was endorsing, let's work those other muscles, but let's do it while rendering you devoid of your usual go-to things. The actor also veiled thin insults at Marvel claiming that despite the success, their movies did not represent what filmmaking exactly is. He said, if you're talking about, adjusted for inflation, the biggest movies of all time, Gone with the Wind and The Ten Commandments are there. I'm sure that in the years those movies came out, there were probably films that you and I would agree were a better representation of what cinema can be. RDJ later admitted that money no longer plays a role in helping him decide what to do. He said that the money prestige illusion dissolved very soon after the first Iron Man movie defied the odds and emerged as a blockbuster film. Recently, dedicated fans noticed that Downey, who has been followed by 50 million people, but only follows 43 accounts, had abruptly stopped following all of his Marvel co-stars, including close friends Chris Evans and Tom Holland. The realization sent fans into a frenzy as they tried to figure out if Downey had some ulterior motive behind his actions. One of the fans commented, I don't know what's happening, Mr. Stark. Why, why did you unfollow the Marvel cast on Instagram? Speculation about Downey's actions immediately sprouted among fans, who wondered if if maybe there was some falling out with his castmates, but the real reason may be as simple as Downey, or his manager, trying to downsize and curate his social media now that he's not tied to the Avengers world anymore. Another fan wrote on Twitter, I think people are blowing this out of proportion. RDJ still has a lot of love for his Marvel castmates, but his manager is the one running his account now and is only focusing on brand stuff, other projects. Apart from this, a fresh wave of drama was instigated when, in an interview with Empire magazine, Martin Scorsese gave the Marvel Cinematic Universe the cold shoulder, comparing the billion-dollar franchise to theme parks. Scorsese told the magazine, I don't see them. I tried, you know? But that's not cinema. Honestly, the closest I can think of them, as well-made as they are, with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances, is theme parks. It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to another human being. Downey Jr. told Howard Stern on the radio personality's Sirius XM show that he acknowledges Scorsese's nuanced take. I appreciate Scorsese's opinion because I think it's like anything. We need all of the different perspectives so we can come to the center and move on. There's a lot to be said for how these genre movies, and I was happy to be part of the problem, if there is one, denigrated the era, the art form, of cinema. And by the way, when you come in like a stomping beast and you eliminate the competition in such a demonstrative way, it's phenomenal.
Now, although people enjoy the movies, they understand what Scorsese is trying to say. I love superhero movies, but I definitely see what Scorsese is saying. Superhero movies have such great potential. They just need to be made by people who have a genuine passion for these wonderful characters instead of cash-grabbing conglomerates like Disney and Warner Bros. Just take notes from Raimi's Spider-Man 1 and 2 and Nolan's The Dark Knight LOL. But aside from RDJ, other filmmakers like James Gunn also commented on Scorsese's hot take. Gunn also spoke out on Twitter saying, I was outraged when people picketed The Last Temptation of Christ without having seen the film. I'm saddened that he's now judging my films in the same way. He added, That said, I will always love Scorsese, be grateful for his contributions to cinema, and can't wait to see The Irishman. Later, Joss Whedon also followed suit. It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to another human being. I first think of James Gunn, how his heart and amp, guts are packed into GOTG. I revere Marty and Amp, I do see his point, but, well, there's a reason why I'm always angry. All in all, Robert has daringly uncovered a web of unsettling controversies within Marvel's productions. From disturbing allegations against Stan Lee to Marvel's historical character disputes, undoubtedly these revelations reflect the real colors of the entertainment industry. That's it for today, folks. Until next time, goodbye.